about a month ago. Shirley gave many, many years to the school committee. Um, she was really a vocal for um, a, a vocal, a vocal person for the students, always keeping the students in mind. She was always um, encouraging for the superintendents and, and a, a supportive, very supportive school committee member. Um, she started a wonderful program up in um, Methuen in which the students from other um, countries would go to their schools and their parents would come to her program and she made that program from the bottom up and parents would learn how to say um, how do I go to a doctor's appointment um, you know what things that they needed to know for survival language in school and she was instrumental in, in that program in Methuen so she always had students and children in mind so if you wouldn't mind joining me just for a moment in a moment of silence for Shirley Callen Thank you very much. Okay. Um, our first agenda item would be uh, approval of items by consensus. Mrs. Benton. Good evening, everyone. Um, we have two items um, on the consent ag agenda this evening. The um, minutes from the approval of the minutes from the March 24th uh, regular session and acceptance of a donation from the Rotary Club for $2,800, um, which will be used for teacher technology integration primarily at the Shawshin School. John Darty uh, of the Wilmington Rotary worked with Neil Ellis on getting us this donation, and I recommend that you accept this gift with appreciation to the Rotary, Wilmington Rotary Club, who really consistently uh, supports our schools in many ways, including financially. So we very much appreciate that. Too. Thank you. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of March 24th. 2010 regular session and the acceptance of a donation from Wilmington Rotary to the Shashin School for $2,800. Dr. Quick. Motion to approve the minutes of March 24, 2010 regular session and secondly accept the donation from the Wilmington Rotary Club to the Shashin School for $2,800. Uh, do we have a second? Mr. Higgins. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Abstain. <laughs> okay, Mr. Veal. Um, in case you're wondering, Trish is um, unable to be with us tonight, and so she's having, um, we're having the meeting taped for her so that she'll do the minutes from the tape afterwards. There's a nice friend who volunteered to come and help, so thank you. Okay, um, our next item would be student representative report from Kellen Campbell. Hi, Kellen. Hey. Uh, this past month has been full of activity at the high school as spring activities are in full swing. Uh, the boys basketball team was recently awarded the state SAM Sportsmanship Award. The team was invited to attend a Celtics game and was presented with this award during halftime. Also that week we Is had... It, Kellen, we'll stop one second. Oh, okay. I've the got superintendent award. has some oh, awards yeah, award. here. Okay. So, okay. All right, cool. Um, also that week we had the mandatory pre-prom meeting that educated students and parents on the dangers and consequences of unsafe activities such as speeding, underage drinking, and heroin use. The junior prom was that Friday and the senior prom will be May 7th at the Danvers Port Yacht Club. Last Friday was the Pops concert, which featured the high school's jazz band, wind, woodwind ensemble, and the acapella group Soundscape, as well as the middle school's jazz band. The concert was at the middle school and was a huge success. Uh, yesterday, students left for a 10-day trip to Costa Rica where they will learn about the local culture while studying turtles and the environment. So that was really exciting for a lot of students will be spending April vacation there as well as the remainder of this week. Uh, tomorrow night between 5 and 8 is a senior class fundraiser at Fuddruckers in Reading. Coupons for the event are available at the high school or, or online and if you order uh, food from there between 5 and 8 and present a coupon, Fuddruckers will be donating 20% of your purchase to the senior class. Also tomorrow night is the National Honor Society induction, which will take place in the auditorium at 7. And Friday morning of this week, it's a busy week, is the teacher appreciation breakfast at the high school. And next week is April vacation, which everyone is looking forward to. Thank you. Thank you, Kella. That was great. Any questions or comments? Cool. You always give us such a nice detailed report. We appreciate it, Kella. Thank, Thank you. you taking your time to come. 
All right. Um, our next item of business is the superintendent's report. Uh, two items on the agenda, plus I want to um, show uh, the awards that the basketball team has received and also uh, just comment on the junior prom because my husband and I uh, were um, able to attend the junior prom. It was at the Marriott in Burlington and just want to commend the junior class. It was a lovely, lovely evening. The students really um, were very well behaved, uh, dressed beautifully, and had a great time. So I want to commend the Wilmington High students. I want to also share this evening, you've heard about some of these awards. Uh, this past year, um, the Wilmington High School boys basketball team really uh, did a very generous act. Uh, Tewksbury High School girls basketball team lost one of their basketball players to cancer, and the um, athletic director at Tewksbury had asked if we could move the boys game to the Sunday when they wanted to do a special tribute to Megan McCarthy who passed away and um, the boys agreed and they all wore um, armbands in, in memory of Megan and uh, the Tewksbury athletic director was so moved by that he wrote a letter uh, to MIAA um, nominating the boys basketball team for um, sportsmanship award and MIAA awarded the boys Division II basketball a team with the outstanding allegiance to the ideals of sportsmanship award this year because of the letter from the athletic director at Tewksbury. In addition, the Greater Lowell Board awarded the Nathan Aldridge Memorial School Appreciation Award for the 2009-10 season to Wilmington High School for best exemplifying the highest degree of sportsmanship character and ethics among its players, coaches, and spectators in the conduct of its basketball program. So this award goes to all the parents and spectators who sit in the stands as well as the um, coaches and the players. And lastly, on March 24th, when we were sitting here at school committee, our basketball team, team traveled into Boston and was awarded uh, from the Boston Celtics, the Sportsmanship Allegiance of Massachusetts Annual Sportsmanship Award, honoring Wilmington High School for outstanding allegiance to the ideals of sportsmanship during the 2009-10 boys basketball season. Uh, there is one award given to the girls in the state and one award given to the boys, so we really, I would really like to commend again the Wilmington High School boys basketball coach and team for their outstanding sportsmanship. And also play. They, they had a good season as well. <laughs> That's fantastic. Secondly, um, in the superintendent's report is an update on the process of the feasibility study. As you know, Article 10 at town meeting is an article uh, to seek permission to move forward with the feasibility study. This um, is part of the MSBA, Massachusetts School Building Authority, the grant program, which works with local communities to identify school facility needs, develop fiscal responsible and educationally appropriate solutions. As you all know, in September, Wilmington was chosen to move forward in the um, process, one of 14 uh, schools in the state. We are now in the process of completing the capital planning form, and uh, we will then uh, complete the school uh, building project team members and present that to the um, MSBA. On May 1st, the town meeting members will be asked to approve uh, a feasibility study, which uh, we estimate will cost um, approximately $1.2 million. However, the MSBA will reimburse the town for 58.57% of those costs. Uh, I presented to the selectmen on Monday night and uh, the town manager told the audience that um, we're not asking uh, residents to pay for this as a, an additional uh, tax. This will either come out of the operating budget or he will do, or they will do a, a, a loan, uh, but it's not going to. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, Marchese? I, I apologize. I just wanted, can you just clarify the number on the reimbursement? 48.57%. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so it will not come out, will not be an extra um, 
tax on, on, on families. Some may ask why we're taking on this project at this time. Uh, it's my opinion that the Wilmington High School building project is significant to each and every resident of the town of Wilmington and not just those who currently or will have children in the public school system. The majority of residents in Wilmington do not have children who will be educated in the new or renovated high school, but the project is more than a school building project. It is a development of a major long-term town investment. It will affect every one of you for many years in different ways. It is the cornerstone of our public education system and therefore enables the achievement and, ex and reputation of excellence in Wilmington to continue for the next 50 years. The building will be a landmark of town character and civic pride. And we all know that property val values are indirectly influenced by the investment in the public system and the development of critical town assets. I believe that in order to offer a 21st century curriculum, you need to have 21st century uh, uh, facilities. We need to look at updating our science labs, our foreign language labs, our library, our auditorium. We need to look at the fact that our performing and visual arts program has more than quadrupled in size in the past 10 years. We have over 400 of our 987 students uh, participate in the uh, performing arts. Our band uh, has 120 students. Uh, next year's strings will have 140. And we frankly do not have a performing a space large enough for the students to practice. In addition, uh, I was looking at the um, numbers this evening. In 1999, there were 737 students in Wilmington High School. Oh. Our enrollment has uh, increased 32%. And with that, the in, increase in enrollment, there's also been um, change in, in state laws around uh, special educating special ed students in re least restrictive areas. And we want to increase the number of programs that we have at Wilmington High School. However, it's not through um, lack of interest, but lack of space that we're limited in, in the programs. Uh, this coming year, we will be taking over the uh, food services uh, office to turn that into a, a classroom. We took over last year the uh, teacher's room uh, to, to turn into a classroom. And, and frankly, some of our classrooms are in substandard spaces. We do not have a classroom for our English language learner program. And with the new standards-based um, curricula, in, differenti in focus on differentiated instruction, you can't have a small classroom and deliver the program because it involves project-based uh, activities as well as small group and large group activities. So although um, our class sizes are, are, have been traditionally uh, at 22, that doesn't necessitate a smaller classroom because I was asked that question. <laughs> it actually um, necessitates a classroom that allows for large and small group activities. And lastly, I would say to the um, Residents of Wilmington, I'm very proud and excited to be part of this process because it's an important and exciting time in Wilmington. And the decisions that you make will be decisions that will affect your children and your children's children uh, for many years to come. In my opinion, it's an investment in Wilmington, and we're hoping for a large turnout at a town meeting on May 1st at 1030 in the high school gymnasium. And um, I'd like to add to that I'm going to give out a um, list of the Wilmington PAC presidents. And um, Judy and John, I <laughs> don't need to do this. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I'm just wondering if before the evening's out, we have the list of the each of the schools and their presidents. And we'd like to make a phone call to these presidents and ask them to get the word out that um, there is going to be a vote on this uh, warrant, Article 10, and could they please see that they're, or hopefully encourage their um, parents to come to town meeting so that we can show um, the town that this is really um, something that's important. So before the end of the, or at the end of the meeting afterwards, if you don't mind, just let me know which one you might like to call. And um, then if we split the calling a little bit, we could each call one. I'll call the rest. So that would be great. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Yeah, I, I just have some questions. Um, uh, uh, Benton, um, 
just so, just so I understand, and I know that the number um, one point two million dollars is probably a standard cost for a feasibility study. But could you please explain to me what exactly we're going to be getting for one point two million dollars and how much work is involved, so I can understand why mm -hmm. some a, a document is going to take twelve man years to kind of create. It's more than a document. It, that cost includes hiring a, a, a operations project manager to manage the, the project, uh, hiring architects to do once the decision is made um, of whether to renovate, add on, or build new, to uh, bring the project through schematic design, which in reality is the design for the new or the renovated building, which includes uh, all the educational the educational program. So it's more than just a report. It's hiring someone to um, run the operation and an architect to come in and do the design. Uh, how long is it supposed to take to? Six to nine months. Because it still seems to me, just, just to be clear, I mean, if you're paying an architect $100,000 a year, it's 12 architects full time for a year. Um, I know that there are people involved, uh, but it still seems like an awful lot of money. <laughs> this, this, uh, are, are, I mean, are, are tests done? Do they drill holes? Are they doing any preparatory work looking at soil samples and anything else? I mean, we'll do all of that and clue decide on if a site. I mean, if, if, if there's a decision to build new, yeah. they will um, do testing and decide on a site because there are other possibilities in town. Uh, for that's, that's the budgeted amount, so we've got to go out to, we go out to bid. There's a design um, review panel. That, get, that gets constituted to retain an art, to retain the design professionals. No, we uh, the the school building committee mm -hmm. joins with the we get uh, three members of the Massachusetts School Building Authority design team, and we work together to hire a operations project manager and uh, to hire an architect. There, um, it's a different process than it has been in the past. As far as we can, if the committee is happy with the architect we had before, can ask MSBA if we can continue with that. If not, we can uh, interview architectural firms from the list on the state bid mm -hmm. list. So it's possible that, I mean, is it possible that we'd get through this whole phase for less than 1.2? Uh, my opinion, no. I'm going to be honest with you. I just talked with Winchester. There's, they have to go back to town meeting for more money, and that's why we, we had originally said um, 900000 That's why we're bringing it up to $1.2 million. It gets us to the place where you would then dig the hole to build the new building or to add the addition. That's the process. Mr. Higgins? Um, <clears throat> Being in the business, doing this for a living, uh, I do understand 1.2 million seeming like a large number. Uh, but once you once you start looking at what goes into design, it's not it's not it's not just 12 architects that are going to be working on the building for a year. It's probably going to be 15 architects working on it. The architect is also going to have to hire site engineers, civil engineers, structural engineers, electrical engineers, plumbing fire protection, fire alarm. Now there's energy code specialists. Um, what else am I missing? Lighting. You know, not just electrical engineering. It's actually the lighting because you have to have a certain amount of lumens per space, things like that, nighttime. The drainage systems need to be um, covered. There, there are going to be hundreds of people, hundreds, working on a design for a new school and where it will fit best in the town. So 1.2 million, yeah, it's a, it's a big it's a big number, um, <clears throat> but as the town manager said, we're not looking at new taxes to do it. We're gonna we're gonna figure out a way to get this done without putting any burden on uh, the, the residents of the town. Um, we, and, and it's it's something that needs to happen. It's imperative that it happens. And I I can tell you from experience, from doing this every single day of my life, construction costs are at all time lows right now. Everyone's working on the cheap. We, architects are working for what, for what they were working for 25 years ago. You know, lumber costs. You, you can buy lumber now for what you could buy it for in 1980. And there's only one place for the, for the cost to go when it's up. The school will need to be replaced. I think it needs to be replaced now. Feasibility study will let us all know that. Um, 
<clears throat> but yeah, it's 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 something that needs to happen. And and the one point two with the economy the way it is, I think that we could even you know get someone to lock into a contract of a of a, a GMP guaranteed maximum price. You know, I, I don't see any issues with that. It's definitely an avenue to pursue, um, but it's also something I definitely want to be a part of. Well, to quote, <laughs> to quote um, the chair of the uh, selectman the other night, I thought he, it was a nice analogy. He said it's, it, it's like the analysis of your, you have a house and you have to decide whether you want to add on, renovate, mm -hmm. or build new. Yes, there is a cost. For us, it's a six hundred thousand dollar cost because we will be get, getting reimbursed. But think, but take that six hundred dollars, six hundred thousand dollars, and think about the cost of the total project. We all know that when the, major, uh, the master study was performed in 2007, the recommendations around renovate or build, I, I believe we were talking around $80 million. Yeah. So the $600,000 in relationship to the $80 million is a very small fraction of, uh, of the total cost. And I think you have to look at it in that in relation. But it, yeah, it is going to cost us. And those are the new rules. Okay. Um, Mr. Go ahead. Mr. McKenzie and then Mr. Veal. Uh, two comments. Just to follow up on a comment I made a few meetings ago, I highly recommend Mr. Higgins getting on, on that on that billing committee. And if there's anything we can do to get him on that, that would be tremendous for us. And the other question I have is I'd like to ask council whether or not it would be legal for us to actually ask the PAC presidents as school committee members to endorse a town warrant as school committee members if we do it as private citizens it's probably a difference yeah. I, I just want to ask an opinion what, i don't believe that's what the chair asked you the chair asked you to invite the parents out to vote on uh, not what not how to vote and that's perfectly legal okay to ask i just to invite parents yeah to I, vote. I, again i just want clarification and yeah. how people speak to the to president the ethics of the PAC commission would tell you that you can inform the community of the meeting as long as you're not telling them how to vote. Now, private groups can lobby, exactly. but that's yeah, not yeah. what the chair asked you to do tonight. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on, on, on what everyone's going to be doing. We're so. asking them to come out to come out to the town meeting to, vote. to vote to on vote. Article 10. Okay. Yeah, to the vote. Yeah. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to be clear. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Veal. Um, well, I just want to say I mean, I've been involved in a lot of these projects as well, uh, and I understand that there's a lot of personnel involved. I just don't think they get involved um, until after you get through schematic design. Um, so it's, it's 1.2 million to get to schematic, but it's uh, most of those consultants, I think, come on board in design development and um, when you're doing the construction documents phase. Uh, with you know, some of them are some of them are front loaded. So I still think that, given what I know and working with projects, and I sort of the time involved, it just seems like a really high number to sort of come up with a, a feasibility study and a schematic design. Um, on a school, which we all know, the architects are going to be basically, um, anyone who's involved in this business are going to be recycling a lot of designs they've done over and over and over and, you know, tweaking it here and there. But th there are multiple projects throughout the state where architects have basically, for one school building, just taken um, the exact plans they've used for another community and whited out <laughs> the, the, the name of the client and put the new school district in. So I... I I want to be careful about, you know, I know it's a small percentage of the overall budget, but times are still top, tough, and budgets being what they are, and I'm thinking like $1.2 million for a study that's going to take six months is a lot of money. I, mean, I, I guess I'm raising my hand. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 my, my response is the rules have changed, and they're not our rules. In order to get $15 million back from the state for a project, yes. we have to follow their rules, and these are their rules. We have to go through the feasibility study, and this is what's required. Um, I I don't know how to reduce the cost, because those are the rules. Could I remind us, too, that we're working with Mr. Cairo, who brought in the middle school for a million dollars under budget, and so if there's any any possibility that there's going to be a savings of money, I think he's got such an eagle eye that um, we don't have to worry about it. I think his side will worry about it, and and he certainly will be aware of um, the costs. And I and I have the feeling that if it doesn't cost us that much, we don't pay that much because the state is not going to reimburse us for something that we're not paying for. 
So I, I feel very secure. And watching the other night at the um, watching the other night at the selectmen's meeting, what I was thinking, and I was I was going to say, but I'll just say it here. I feel very secure with the two leaders we have, with Mr. Kyra and Mrs. Benton. They are both detailed persons, detail oriented. Um, they really check their facts out. They do not spend our money frivol frivolously. And so I felt very secure listening um, the other night and knowing that the two of them have each other's back and they're, they're really watching for this. And as Mrs. Benton said, the other part of it is we have to play by the rules of the state. That's just, that's a huge part of this, you know, so. Um, Mr. Marchese. Just to follow up to one of Mr. Higgins' questions, or excuse me, comments regarding a GMP or at least gaining a price. Um, w one thing I would recommend is getting a local architect, obviously, because they charge for reimbursables. And, and, and being coming from the construction industry myself, I've seen these invoices where they could escalate. And you can go out and, and do an RFP or get a proposal from an architect for not to exceed maximum limit up to a ceiling to, to control it at a maximum amount and say, you know, this is our budget, 900 or a million dollars, not to exceed. So that is possible. So, uh, I mean, I agree with you, Mr. Mr. Vale, that costs need to be controlled. And I also agree with Mr. Higgins that we can secure a maximum guaranteed price. But if I understand Mrs. Benton right, we're working with the MSBA, and do they have the architectural list? Or are we allowed to just, we work, they, she said It'll be a to joint us that decision, it's a joint we, decision, and they basically yeah. have the list. So we're going to do the best we can with the list that they give us, they share with Hopefully us. Hopefully by the next meeting I will have the list of the school building committee that work, Mr. Kyra and I are working it out. Great. Yes, Mr. Higgins. Just one more comment along those lines too. The, for, for as drastic and as far out of control as um, the Newton North High School mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. that, that is a personal black eye for mm -hmm for the, the um, Mass School Building Authority. So they that's not going to happen again. It's certainly not going to happen happen in Wilmington with, with the people that we do have watching it. But if we're, if we're looking at an $80 million high school and we can get it built for $70 million, we're going to try to get it done for $65 million. But we, we're not going to skimp on quality. We're going to get it done right, you know. Uh, and it's certainly not going to escalate out of control like Newton North did. It, it, that, I don't think that will ever happen again in this state as long as I'm alive. Um, just because of how crazy that became. So I just, I wouldn't want anyone to think that that's possibly going to happen again. Um, every cost of this is going to be scrutinized. And, and really, all we really need to do right now is get the money for the feasibility study. We have to do the feasibility study. We have to move forward on this. So, you know, worrying about costs getting out of control is, is very premature, very premature. There's a lot of very intelligent people that are involved in this process and who take a lot of pride in making sure that costs do not get out of control. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Mr. Ruggiero. I just make one comment. The $1.2 million did come from collaboration with the MSBA. We did speak with them. Um, they gave us some information regarding other districts that built high schools and what they um, dollar amounts they use for a feasibility study with the same square footage roughly to look at the high school. So it's a number that was arrived at through collaboration with the MSBA. Thank you. Any more discussion? Is that yes or? Oh, move on. <laughs> or move on. <laughs> okay. So next thing in my Thank report you. is the global study. Uh, we had two classes offered this year uh, at the uh, kindergarten level, the, the Global Child Regional Coordinator uh, notes in her memo that uh, she believes because of the economy there was a lack of uh, enrollment, but they would like to pursue it at the Wilton Street and Shashi next year, and I will support that. Oh, okay, thank you. Any questions? Oh. Great. Okay, um, our next item of business would be old business. Mrs. Benton. The second reading of the 2010-2011 school calendar, uh, which is the detailed uh, school calendar, and um, the 2011-2012 general calendar, which traditionally we approve two, two years out for parents who want to make uh, vacation plans. I would recommend approval of both calendars. Okay. Um, so I'd entertain a motion that we approve the 2010 
2011 school calendar and a proposed 2011-2012 school calendar. Do we have a motion? Mr. Marchese. I make a motion that we approve the 2010-2011 school calendar and the proposed 2011-2012 school calendar. Thank you. A second. Mr. Bill. <laughs> I'll make that a second. Uh, can, I, can I ask some questions? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah. We, yep. so does, this, does the school calendar go through any kind of um, subcommittee? I mean, how's it? How's it no. I, I raised this question, I think, last year, too. And I, I really would like to begin a process where we take a hard look at this calendar and think about renovating it. <laughs> um, so I don't really know how it gets generated. Is it locked in by union contracts, is, are there reasons why it sort of pops out this way, or, or is there a process that, that I could begin to sort of revisit this? Mrs. Benton. Parts of it are locked in by union contract, the number of days. Um, parts of it are not, and that's why we do more than one reading of the calendar, so that school committee can have input between the first reading and the second reading. On, on, on calendars. I put together a subcommittee of administrators to put together the dates for, you know, conferences and um, report cards and uh, CIT days. But um, there are limitations on when we can begin the school year and how many days. The other limitation is athletics. There are some, um, I mean, there have been some school systems that have tried to change to one vacation in March mm -hmm. that have not been at all successful. If you are interested in changing the that's calendar. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm. Was well, that what you were looking for, the yeah, one vacation in March? Something like that, or, or to do something with this April, this April Radical. vacation is just in, like, I'll just gonna say it. I just think it's in a terrible time. It should either be later or earlier, but not where it is. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> if if that is the personal anecdotal data, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think there's some hard fast data from other districts. We could ask the Stoner superintendent; they try to do again, it. Again, that's kind of Virginia goes on vacation data. in March. I mean, mm. <laughs> I, mean I guess I, I, how do we take a hard look at this and figure out, you know, who's doing what where, and see what sort of makes sense for us, rather than sort of just. Just Are you, do it this way because it's always been done this way. Yes, but, Mr. Ville, it sounds mm -hmm. to me like what you're saying is that we do the school calendar around what's best for the academics and the curriculum, and really it's um, that's what should come first in my mind in the school calendar. And um, Oh, and I agree. I mean, I think if we were to if we were to start with a clean slate and say we were reinventing this system from day one, what would we do? And I'm not so sure it's this. It might be this. Well, I mean, I, I could encourage you to put together a subcommittee to look at it, but I'm going to caution you. I can, te Mrs. Duffy was referring to the data. I can present you with data from six surrounding communities who have tried to do this and have failed miserably with their uh, parents. So, I think. I'm more than six could, Mrs. Yeah. No. Okay, Mrs. Duffy, go ahead. But but it's good to take a look at it and uh, gather all the data in one source. I mean, there's no reason someone from school committee couldn't join uh, that yeah. particular meeting that's already a group that's already together that's going to be looking at it to put in the professional development days. Um, but to gather from the Mass Association of School Committees what the other districts have done on um, that Good Friday, which is considered not, it's just a day, <laughs> it's not a Good Friday. They've tried to have that as a school day multiple communities and it has not worked out as educationally feasible. Um, as far as changing the um, vacation, some districts have tried it and it has not been successful that I'm aware of. I know three that did and it did not work. Um, but I think there might be a few that it did work out okay for. I'm not sure on that. But again, the data is available through the um, school, Mass Association of School Committees, has data on all the districts as well as the Superintendents Association could gather that information for, for us for a meeting. We can follow up on that. Um, yes, Ms. O'Connell. I don't know whether I should just ask this question or not, but I, it got lost on me. Um, what's wrong with it? <laughs> what's the matter with it? <laughs> what, what would, what? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I just don't know enough about how 
uh, this is my own, and I know I'm you know opening up a, a can of worms, but it's like I sort of look at this and I'm like, I mean, I know it's based on sort of originally, just to go way back, I mean, the whole thing is based on some kind of agricultural calendar. Um, you know, and we've been allocated a tradition based on that. Then we've got some religious holidays that we try and coordinate things around on Christmas, New Year's. We have Easter. Easter is based on the moon. Um, and I'm just wondering when we sort of look around, and then of course we have the, the budgetary issues, which is you know, how do we actually make, if we wanted to add more days, then we have a budget question. We have state standards that say you have to have a minimum number of days. But I'm just sort of thinking like, in order to be the best we can be, I mean, maybe we should take a fresh look at things and see if um, there's some process that said, look, um, maybe 10 years from now, if we phase it in, in an ideal world, our calendar wouldn't look like this. It would look substantially different. And I don't, since I don't really know what the ultimate goal should be, I don't really know what I, what I have questions about with this. I'm just saying, what's the process for sort of revisiting this? And maybe there is some process we could come up with where we could collectively say, this is our goal for the, um, the best school year we can come up with, the best school district, and it's based on this type of a calendar, and then we got to figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, I'm just calling the question, in a sense, because I, I don't know, but I feel like it comes up, and then we just sort of stamp it, and it goes on, and we never have the chance to call the question. So okay. um, I'm calling the question. That makes me understand a lot better. <laughs> I understand that. I'm like, I'm like, what's wrong? Mr. Marchese. Yeah. Just to follow up with Mr. Vale and, and what Ms. O'Connell said, um, I don't think Ms. Vail, Mr. Vale is necessarily saying there's anything necessarily wrong with it. He just, I guess, wants to see at the table when the discussion happens to understand what, what the first day is set and why the last day is set and just understand a little bit more, and just a little bit more information about the calendar. You know, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Vale, in, in, in your interpretation of what you've been asking. It's, it's probably half that. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. it's half this idea of, you know, if we, if we were to start over and we didn't have this history of you know, 200 years of, of tradition based on harvests and, and a bunch of other things, I mean, if we were really sort of looking at this and, from, and we didn't have a school district and we just said we wanted to start one, what would be the best? And, yeah, what um, would be the ideal you know, and what do they do in yep. Japan and what do they do in Germany? I mean, you know, we're in, we're in a global competition here. And we've been asked also by the federal government in this race to the top stuff to, to revisit a lot of stuff. And I'm just, I think there's an opportunity to, to, to think about it yeah, more. I agree. More, um, more in depthly than just sort of, you know, looking at them and saying, okay, fine, you know. I'll get Glenn Kuchar to get, a, get us some data from other districts and then put a little committee together. All right, that would be great. Is that, does that work for you? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That's good. Wait a minute, so we didn't vote yet. Yes, please do. I'll, I'll, it can be on the record, too, which is like when, when um, Peggy Kane asked me to be on this committee, <laughs> I said, I will do it, but I'll be a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> no questions are. It's really, it's, <laughs> and, um, you're not. You know. It hasn't happened yet, Mr. Vail. No. Not a pain in the you-know-what. I, I think the questions you ask are valid, and you should be able to ask anything you want. I mean, it's a yes, public forum, and if you got a question, you should be able to ask it, and that's why you're here. So thank you. I, I, thank I, hope, you for, I hope to make it all better. Yeah, so. and I thank you for asking those questions. I thank you for that. We just want to make sure that we can um, answer them in the right way, you know, in a way that's productive for you and for um, everyone. The... Um, and I think the first thing you start with is the union issues, because if you want to go more than 185 days, we just can't do it until we redo all the contracts, and then you, then it comes the cost, as you said. So, But those are things that the subcommittee could be talking about. That sounds good. And I think I heard right before I left here, there's one community that's doing away with all, all their athletics for next year. Everything. Did you hear that, Mrs. It's, Duffy? It's, yes, I did hear yes, that. It's not yes. Stoneham, yes. is it? No, yes. Stoneham already said that a year ago, and they have all of their athletics. So somebody has no money, and that's the first thing you cry, because okay. you get a public outcry, and then, yeah, right. that won't yeah. happen. So but that's my own opinion. <laughs> All right, but we'll put together something for you. I don't think any community will ever do that, 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 would, that would totally would devalue through. their real estate yeah. to <laughs> such... Devastating exactly. measures. Okay. Um, all right. So, all in favor? Oh, we have a vote on the table that we would accept the 2010-2011 um, school calendar and a proposed 2011-2012.
Um, so all in favor? Opposed? No one. Okay, thank you. Unanimous. All right. Um, our next items are new business. First one, anti-bullying policy, first reading. Um, subcommittee on policies uh, consisting of um, Quincy Jones and I have been working on an uh, anti-bullying policy. However, um, I just learned today that it is still in committee, the um, new law. And the new law is discussing the definition of bullying. So I'm not sure whether we, what's the pleasure of the committee? Do we go forward with uh, the first reading of this policy and then bring it back once the law is signed by the governor, in, if there's changes in the definition, or would you? Um, I just, uh, Mr. Marchese? I, I, I just had a question. Um, we know that the legislature is going forward, hopefully that it's going to pass, and it's going to come out of committee favorably and all that stuff. But what would be the point of us doing a policy if there's going to be a state statute and a law that would ultimately trump what we do, which also has punishments instituted in it directly right written in the law the way it stands today it actually has punishments written in it punishable by by prison by um, by monetary fines and all that and defines bullying to an extent where people can actually be punished um, it, it, if you actually want to see a copy of it I have I brought it I brought it that's not what this is yes. as yes. a subcommittee we so, did review that yeah. so so all, all I'm asking though what would be the point of us having a policy if there'd be a mass general law that would trump what we have that's all I'm asking the mass general law which I believe will get passed in some form will it will instruct every school system to have a policy they're not telling us what the policy is. They're asking us to create a policy. That's what this is. And then we have to put procedures in place. My recommendation is that if the definition of the word bullying is going to change, that we may want to wait and, re and consider it once the law is signed by the governor. I was at a meeting today with Dr. Englander who is the head of the Massachusetts uh, Aggression Academy, who's actually the one, the leader in, going to be working with the DESE on the implementation of the law. And um, frankly, she, had, she, she suggested to us that we develop our own definition of bullying and not use the state definition yeah. of bullying. That is, it, it is up to each school committee to decide what um, they want in their um, policy. Um, but I was just sharing with you what I heard today. It is the pleasure of the committee. This policy just identifies that the school will not tolerate bullying and will act upon it, including cyberbullying that happens outside of the school, and but it carries over into the school. And that's been the issue in, um, for us, is trying to respond to incidents that are taking place outside of school that are impacting students feeling safe in school. So I'll do whichever committee Dr. likes. Um, quick question, first of all, first part of it is, when is this vote to be taking place? Um, we don't know that. It's going to happen in the next couple of months, I believe. Okay. My, and just the second part is, is just my, my own opinion would be, don't wait, because of the fact that who knows what's going to happen in a couple of weeks' time. You know, if, if, especially if it's really up to the schools themselves to make that decision. I, I don't see why we should wait. Ms. O'Connell. To Leslie's point, <clears throat> I can understand where Mr. Marchese is coming from, but time is of the essence. These are actually past due, and we can't afford the system to be uncovered. So if we have a policy, and if anything, it being in the handbook, it creates parent and student awareness within the policy handbook that they're receiving. So. I say, you know, if there is a mass general law that trumps it, let it get to a court of law and have a judge overrule it. And this way we're covered, you know, from a liability standpoint. So I say policy it to death and have it everywhere on every cover in every room because this this right here, this bullying and also the wildcat project, aside from academics being the positive end of things, that is your second 
these these two items are your two biggest destructive forces right now in any school system. So we 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 really can't wait. Right. Mr. Marchese. Just a clarification, just so everyone understands, I'm all in favor of the bullying policy. Just don't let anybody, you know, think that. Um, I'm actually very upset right now that it's actually in committee and they're more interested in casino gambling tonight than resolving this issue. So I'm very adamant about this. That's why I have it here. That's why I'm saying that in this law that they're passing, they actually define bullying. They say what should be prohibited, and they actually have enforcement in here. And what we don't have in ours specifically is what the enforcement will be, what the punishment will be. There is nothing in here that actually specifically says that. And I would like to see this policy have more teeth so that the students and parents know that if you're going to bully, if you're going to do something, that you're going to know what the results are, not to um, indiscretion of the principal or superintendent or whatever. People need to know what the results are, and that's what the mass general law is going to provide, and that's what I like about it. And that's why I'd like to see this being discussed tonight instead of casino gambling, because this to me is very important. You mean by the by the state? <laughs> no, 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 put policy together with the administration, the procedures on how all the stuff, the meat and the teeth of what you would like in it, Mr. Marchese, that needs to be done by the administration. Our job as school committees to create the policy, the policy that falls Mass General Guidelines, that is a definition that we have here is, for, is from the definition that the Mass General, um, uh, that they're going to be voting on. Um, policy is always subject to be looked at and changed and modified and adjusted if it needs to be. It can come back many, many, many times for revisions. Certainly as you see whether it's working, whether it's effective or not, it can always come back. But the procedural piece of it is not school committee's purview. And that is the superintendent's, and that's why we hire the superintendent and the administration to take care of that piece of it. The policy, the procedures, that they put together will be sh will show up in the high school handbook and um, any of those documents so that parents are well aware of the policy they can refer to and the consequences that will come with that. But the school system, the teachers, the principals who have to enforce those rules are the ones that need to be um, putting those procedures together. Thank you. Mr. Higgins, and then you, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Um <clears throat> Let me just mm -hmm. let me just start at the where I was going to originally start with this. Um, I would I would actually recommend that we do wait to hear what the state does, um, simply because what is their definition? What is their law going to look like? What you know? Let's let's let them vote on it and say it. To Miss O'Connell's point of you know let's let's protect ourselves by getting it in the books. We already have a standard set, and it's documented. And, it, and we've talked about it, and it's been brought to our, our, our forefront that when there is bullying in schools, it is handled immediately. I mean, you know, this, the superintendent has been all over this, um, you know, with the principals, the, the assistant principals, the teachers, they are, they, they've been very proactive about taking care of bullying in the schools. So it's well documented that Wilmington is far, far ahead of anyone else with bullying. So I wouldn't worry about any liability issues of actually not having a physical document saying what it's going to do because we've been handling it and we, and we will continue to handle it. And I have full faith in the schools that they are protecting our students. Uh, that's not an issue for me. The other part of why I would like to wait for the first reading, so we, you know, if we have the first reading tonight, we can vote on it at the next meeting. The next meeting, we're going to have two new members. And I would like the new members to be, actually have a say in this, because this, you know, like Mr. Marchese said, this is a huge issue finally coming to where it needs to be, and that's out, out in the open. The, the biggest, biggest problem with bullying is it's always done behind closed doors. We're bringing this out into the open, and this policy should be out in the open. We have two new members coming on. I'd like them to be fully a part of this new policy coming through. So I would, I would really like to hold the first reading with them here, let them hopefully give, give some great input and, and actually be able to vote on it at the second reading. With, then that way our new members also have two readings of this policy and it's, and it's a great way to get them involved in, in actually what we do here. 
Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Um, Mr. Marchese. Just as a follow-up to Mrs. Duffy's comment about resetting policy and not um, punishments, and that's up to the superintendent and the principals. If the Mass Massachusetts State Legislature has gone as far as say, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but shall be guilty of the crime, stalking, punishment, imprisonment in the state for not more than five years, or a fine not more than a thousand, or imprisonment of the House of Corrections not more than two and a half years. So they went as far as our state legislature actually write in here what the what the punishment is going to be for stalking. They also have other things for malicious um, activities. If they went as far as to say that, what what prevents us as a committee to do that? And again, I understand that we're here to set policy, not punishment, but this need this is a real issue and if, if people don't know what the consequences are and it's set up to you know a discussion or a, an interpretation of what the crime was people aren't going to know the seriousness of how you know how much we how much this really means to us and how serious we really are taking this so I just want to send the point home to people that if you're going to bully you're going to pay the price and th you know and I just want pe I want people to know and I'm glad the Massachusetts state legislature is stepping up and putting it in writing and that's what I like and I think we should do the same Mr. Oh Mr. Vale and then Mr. Higgins uh, just like the, the comment I, I believe and I, I uh, Ms. Duffy you can correct me if I'm wrong and, and um, I think that the current policy as as we were reviewing it doesn't have any there is a hole in it and it doesn't apply to bullying that occurs outside of the school we have no way currently under the under our current policies of going after the Facebooks and the internet and the stuff that's happening out of campus even if it's affecting stuff going on on campus so we, we've added that there is a provision here that it, that if it's affecting a student um, and it's occurring outside of uh, off of school grounds we can still do it uh, we can still um, it's still prohibited under our policy and then I'd say that I believe that the student handbook and others already have the punishments on, a, on that that come into play upon a first trans transgression a second transgression and on and on and up um, and, and the and the procedures that the administration is supposed to follow when someone is um, basically accused of violating a policy, how they can defend themselves, how the parents get involved, how it gets ratcheted up, and then ultimately um, either it's expulsion or referral to you know, a district attorney for, for some kind of criminal prosecution, um, or, or, or you know, the parents can certainly bring um, civil actions too. So there's, there, I think a lot of that is already in our student handbook, but what we don't have, and we do have a, a gap that we, I think we should fill very, very quickly is um, what's happening outside of campus and outside of the school uh, school from day to day if it's affecting what's going on and the, the students that are showing up here every day um, uh, and, and I guess the third point I'd make is that um, how the legislature actually works is inscrutable to me um, as it probably is to most folks and the fact is I have no control over and n none of us do um, over when they're actually going to um, enact something and it's going to get out of committee and what it's going to look like. Um, so I guess my interest would be on let's get something on our books as quickly as possible if and when the legislature acts and if and when the governor enacts it and it goes into effect we can look at it and if we like it we can we can amend what we've already got um, and um, and make it make it cons more consistent with what whatever is now on the books and if we don't like it and we think ours is is um, uh, better for whatever reason we can we'll, st we'll stick with ours and and I believe that we have all the um, uh, statutory and legislative authority we already ne we already need um, to, to adopt this policy and the references are are, 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 are right here I'll get back to you, Mr. Higgins, Mrs. Benton. Mr. Vale is absolutely correct the reason why the subcommittee worked on this policy is because we had a very serious incident at the middle school where a student Two students created a, a Facebook page that was a hate page against a teacher and a student, and 36 of our students joined that page. As the policy stands now, I could not do anything to any of those students. This policy would allow me to discipline those students. So I just wanted to reinforce what you had to say. Okay, Mr. Higgins? Yeah, I was actually going to bring up the point about the punishments are in the handbooks, and that also gets re reviewed every year with the, the handbooks as well. So they, we do have punishments in writing that the students get. So when they do have the transgressions, they know what's going to happen. 
but not to the extent of this. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to be clear and just kind of bring everybody back together that we're, we're all on the same team here, and we're all very opposed to bullying of any dimension, whether it happens in school or out of school. And I, I think some of the comments and just wording has been taken out of context that no one's working against each other as to what is for the good of Wilmington Public Schools. There needs to be policies clearly defined. There needs to be changes that needs to take place at the subcommittee level. We need to be conscious of what's going on at the state level, what laws are being passed. I think every one of us wants punishment to be in effect, to be swift and, and, and to be severe when these types of things occur. I think with that, you need to say, to Joan's point, how these different procedures and policies are supposed to be unveiled or modified. And I think that's the points that are just trying to be made. And I think if there's any question about liability or when things should be done to make sure that, you know, we're managing the students' safety, also the legal end of things, is, you know, we have a legal budget. If we have to, if, if we can't make the decision as a committee, maybe we, it's worth a phone call to someone on our, on our legal team to say, you know, what, you know, we certainly can take, have the ability to take care of it at our level, but if we have to, talk to Andy about it or whatever. Andy has approved this. This, this, so, this, so this has exactly. already gone through legal. Right. We didn't, so it's part of the subcommittee's work. Yeah. The policy subcommittee uh, does review yeah. with the lawyer right. anything that is that we've already reviewed. and. We've looked at other um, policies from other districts, what other districts have. We look for the, general, the laws, what's in place with laws. We do some research in regards right. to that, and then we get legal counsel as well before we bring it here. Right. And it goes back to every other point, and I'll close with this, is that this is in our packet for a reason. And a lot of what's on this agenda is because there's a definite need for it. And I think we, none of us are saying that there isn't a need for it. But I think we need to do something now. If anything else, we need to do something now. We can always have the right to change it, but we need to be covered. Okay. It's tough to sit with a parent and say, I can't do anything. I have no, I have no authority to do anything. That has to be probably one of the most helpless mm -hmm. positions, and you are the one who is in that role all the time, will, or will be all the time without this policy change. And um, I would just like to add that um, I agree with Mr. Higgins that it actually the final vote would be when the two new people come on. But I will say that Mrs. Carroll is in the audience tonight and has heard this whole thing, even though she's not able to participate. But we'll have a chance to discuss it at our next meeting, because it would be the second reading. And I do know that um, Mr. Hayes um, had to work tonight, but he always watches the school committee meetings afterwards. So he will have listened to the discussion. And he would have the opportunity to comment on the next at the next meeting. Um, so I, I really think we should go forward with this. But Mr. Marchese. I would just like to have clarification on adding wording to the policy and what the, what the procedure would be and what I would need to do if I don't like what's in this and just wanted to add wording to it, what would the proper procedure be? Would that to be bring it up now or bring it up the next reading? What would happen? Mrs. Benton. The procedure is you receive your packet a week before school committee. Mm -hmm. Every school committee member has every opportunity to contact me to, um, to make any changes, to raise questions, raise concerns. I would then bring it back to the subcommittee on policy, and we would bring it back if, we, if the subcommittee agreed with the recommendations, we would bring it back to the um, school committee at the next meeting. That's the process. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions or comments on this area? So what I'm planning now is that we will have our second reading on this at the next meeting. And I, I just would like to acknowledge the work of Quincy and Joan yes. because we have been working on this for many, many months. Mm -hmm. And although the, pa the report may be three pages long, there have been many outstanding discussions. And we thank Quincy for, for challenging us as we do our work. But they have put a lot of work into this. And I just want to acknowledge that to the public. And so also, I'd just like to reiterate Joan's comment that we can OK this for now, because the part that's not in question is the part um, that we have to give the authority for the out-of-school out of information that mm -hmm. comes into the school. We have to give that authority. It's very important. Um, and so that there's still time. We bring back policies all the time. So um, I, I would have to say, Mr. Marchese, I would, we would certainly um, 
look at your things, but we're going to have to form a new policy subcommittee at the next meeting. And um, to, I, I don't want that to hold up the vote on this because we need that section. But you certainly can do that. And then we'll look at it with the new policy subcommittee because they can be re-voted. And it could, we could vote at this meeting and the next meeting re-vote it. It's not that this is it and cast in stone. Okay, okay, so yeah. I am going to ask for a vote at the next meeting, but that doesn't preclude you from going through and adding or some, and we'll bring that to the first thing we do on the new policy subcommittee. And, and, and I'll tell you right now, Mr. Kane, I will vote for this and, and I will send my comments along. And I apologize for not knowing the procedure. I've only been on the committee for a year, so this is, um, yeah, in terms of changing policy, you know, something's come forward. Right. I didn't know what the exact procedure was, so I, so I apologize for that. Okay, that's all right. Thank you. All right, our next, I thought this was going to be a really fast <laughs> meeting with no, nothing to discuss. <laughs> oh, this is, all right, this is good. It's good. Discussion's excellent. Gets out all our points we need to make. Um, our next item of new business is a monthly financial report. Mrs. Benton and then Mr. Ruggiero. In your packet is the current financial report for the school department, uh, including all expenses posted and encumbered through April 1st. Um, as you can see uh, from Mr. Ruggiero's projections, we hope to end with a small balance um, at the end of the year. And uh, Mr. Ruggiero has um, listed uh, accounts that have deficits greater than $1,000. And I just want to point out and remind everyone the reason why is because we, in many cases we have not made the transfers from the grants that we've received. We're not in deficit. But Mr. Ruggiero can answer any questions. Okay, Mr. Ruggiero. Um, as of April 1st, uh, total appropriation was 30 million. We've expended um, 19.8 million um, and encumbered to date almost 10 million, leaving on the report that you see about a $200,000 balance. Um, as Ms. Superintendent Benton mentioned, um, I have outlined the deficits that are over $1,000, but um, I have not moved any money to grants that we received. There's some grants that we have some money to move that'll come out of the local appropriation to be charged to the grants, as well as the circuit breaker offset that we've talked about before. I haven't moved any special education tuitions to that circuit breaker offset as of um, April 1st. I plan on doing both of those uh, activities in the fourth quarter of, uh, of FY10. Ms. O'Connell. Um, can you just give me an idea if the very intimidating number on page two would be significantly reduced when you do that? Yeah, that the um, full day tuition. Yeah, the uh, the um, the circuit breaker uh, funds um, we receive each year. That was initially um, at one point budgeted at 70 percent. It's down to 40 percent. We've talked about that. Um, so we, re we will receive this year a little over $600,000 from the state for circuit breaker funds. Um, once we receive those funds, we can shift some of these costs and apply it against the funds we receive from the state. I just have not done that yet. Yeah. So for the public's yeah. sake, that yeah. problem will go away. <laughs> Mr. Joe, could I just ask you, on one section where transportation for the homeless, it says that there's a 50% reimbursement. Is that on each of the lines with this, or just that one particular no, line? that one in particular, that um, there, in the homeless transportation, it's a 50-50 share, um, cost share with a, another district in some instances. In that particular item there, okay. we kind of transported um, using our employees that we'll get reimbursed with. Some of the, I think the, the, the other homeless transport, um, can event or transportation line, some of those funds will also be reimbursed from other districts. Okay. And my other question was down on the athletic events use of in-house drivers. Yes. In, What's in-house driver? Uh, one of our minivan drivers oh. we use for um, the transport. Uh, one small of the teams? small teams, small Excellent. group, correct. And we don't have a, a, a labor budget number for that. We just have a transportation, right. um, outside transportation. So that, that expenditure just shows us over budget in report. Excellent. Mr. Marchese. Uh, Mr. Gere, I'm, I'm assuming that because you've given us two pages of items that are over budget, I'm assuming there's probably like kind of 12 pages of items that are way under budget yeah. that's going to 
Okay. Yeah, there, there's in the report. There's you can see all the over and under. So I just wanted to bring your attention to the uh, the overages or the deficit okay. line item. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure everyone knows. Yeah. There's a lot of items that are way under to, to cover. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking for when the new people come on, I'm going to have Mr. Ruggiero go through a budget, take this and go through it. And if any of the sitting members want to be in on that meeting, um, because every time I look at this, I go, all right, I just don't know that piece or I don't know that piece. So I'm thinking maybe we could have Great a idea. workshop on um, reading these budget sheets, if that would be all right. Would other people like, like that? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Marchese. Mr. Ridger, I just have one final question. What's the difference between, essentially the difference between the two packets that you gave us? One is the local appropriation. In the second package, the grants, it's a grant report that shows okay. uh, all but one grant that we just received um, the other day. Okay. And, and this also include the, the stimulus money and all that, that AAR? The, all but the grant we got the other day, we had there was some stimulus funds um, that we knew we were going to receive. Mm -hmm. The money just didn't go out until I think the end of March 31st. So we haven't had a chance. We had to wait for everything to be approved to put the budget in, and, and that's some of the money that'll move from the local appropriation to that grant. It just right. doesn't show on that because we just received the money. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. But it does include the IDEA grants. It, it includes the correct. There's um, there should be two um, IDEA stimulus grants that are identified in there. Thank you. Right. Any other questions? Good. Okay. Um, our next item of new business is the school choice vote. This is Jim, the school committee is required by state law to take a vote on uh, school choice. This vote will determine whether you want to participate in the state, state school choice program. Since the program's inception over 11 years ago, the school committee has annually voted not to participate. There are a variety of philosophical as well as practical reasons to either participate or not. Uh, practical reason, you just heard me talk earlier about the lack of space at the high school. We do not have space for, for students. Um, I um, recommend that you uh, vote not to participate in the state school choice program because of lack of available, available space to accommodate out-of-town students. Okay, I would entertain a motion that the Wilmington School Committee vote not to participate in the state school choice program because of a lack of available space to accommodate out-of-town students. Mr. Higgins. Uh, I move that the Wilmington School Committee vote not to participate in the state school choice program because of a lack of available space to accommodate out-of-town students. Thank you. Do we have a second? This is Duffy. Discussion. Any discussion? Just a um, <coughs> quick, quick question. Um, if, if the committee was to vote for it, but, which I'm not, I just wanted to make it, make it open there and say if other, other out-of-town students were to come into town, would we be in reimbursed for those students? I know we don't have the space for them. But would we be reimbursed for those students at a state level or whatever? I, I just want to know if, if that happens. This is better. The sending town would would be charged a per pupil cost. Okay, and, and those monies would, would come to, to Wilmington. Okay, that, that's all I just wanted to know. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. All right. Delegations. That will that will segue us right into it. That'd be okay. great. This it's very it's different good. sitting on the side of the fence. Come on, come on to the table. No, that's okay. I'm fine. I'm good. No, no. You don't miss that table. I'm good. I'm right here. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. I, Judy, I'm sorry. I forgot this was y'all last night too. But um, I can tell you, this committee is going to miss you. Your insight from all your walks of life was really phenomenal when I was on here. Um, and I wish you well, and I wish you would decide to, no offense to anybody running for election, <laughs> to run for re-election, but thank you, too. And Mrs. Duffy, I told you I'd be here. Uh, thank I didn't you, think Susie. You <laughs> um, I think I served with Joan for nine years, I believe. I've lost track. Um, and I always called Joan the keeper of the records, and it took me probably five years to realize I didn't have to save anything because Joan had everything. Not only that, she can find it, too, so she's going to have a real good time shredding. I know. I've been burning some. Yeah. <laughs> The one thing I think of Joan, and trust me, it can be annoying sometimes, Joan, is Joan knows policy. And it, there were times when we all went, oh, Joan. But I hope that 
this committee and future committees will take that to heart because everything you do is generated from school committee policy. And it's very hard with that big book to forget policy. Sometimes you want to. Um, but Joan kept us on our toes with all of that. And um, she's a remarkable school committee meeting member. And I enjoyed working with her thoroughly. And I wish you well in your new endeavors. And I said, the committee's going to be lost without you. But thank you very much, Joan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Bob. And before we do board members' questions and comments, we're going to have a nice little presentations here. So, Carl, we'll start with you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm glad to miss you. Thank you. I won't you. say anything until we let this open. Wow. Very good. Joan, it's like the two girls. One opens it up and the other one says, I know what I'm getting. <laughs> but we have a surprise for you, an extra surprise. Very cool. Thanks for me to the high school. Nice. Perfect. Isn't that great? Because we have our badge. <laughs> In its own little case. <laughs> Very cool. Yes. Nice. Is that the right one? Lifetime. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go. get that. <laughs> Joan, I thought afterwards, don't take this wrong, it says celebrate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can take that the wrong way. <laughs> Wait for this day. Haven't I been counting down? I'm like, oh, all right, I'm doing good. It's the beginning of the next yeah, football of season. That's good. Be very careful with this. See now, this badge. Okay, <laughs> this badge free into the events: basketball, football. All the sporting tennis. events, which is good. Yeah, tennis is free anyway. Oh, but <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but that's okay. Again, because all the hours, twelve years of twice a month, plus budget meetings and all of that. So this is worth a lot of money. <laughs> so it's going to take me many, many years to make up for all the hours I I put in. But um, I'm looking forward to it, and I uh, really, really need that. Thank you. And Peggy said there's one more thing to be careful with. Okay. As you probably know, Joan was the chair for three years. Oh. <laughs> and she's getting a golden gavel. <laughs> oh, very. I've got to bring that to school. The kids will love it. I'll it has it the around. years of your school committee service and the three years of your um, uh, service chair, as yes, chairperson. chair on it. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Very nice. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. That's very nice. Well, do we get to see our little thing? Our yes, little we're going to do board members. So, do our little piece, would you two sure. like to start with your board members? I'm sure we would, wouldn't we, Judy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I take, thank you. We'll let Joan start. Well, I'll start, and um, I'd like to say thank you to the community. Um, who elected me and then not even knowing me because um, my daughter, my oldest daughter, was in kindergarten when I first came on the board and then re-elected me and then re-elected me. Um, and again, I, I was always at the soccer field. That's where I heard what was going on. Um, that's, you know, you, you hear everything on the soccer fields. Um, and again, like Susie said, I think that that's kind of the piece that I tried to take with school committee, that it wasn't you trying not to make it a personal thing. Our job is policy. And again, I was very, and many times I know, trying um, with policy. And it's a large booklet. and. Um, did the first review of the policy, and then I was involved in the second review of the policy. Um, it's a large document, but everything that we do um, can go back to policy. And uh, I think that that is extremely important as a school committee member. Um, and data is very important as a school committee member. But I, the community has done a nice job in su supporting me, and I think that I've tried to do my best to support the community. Um, in whatever came before me that uh, people wanted to ask or know about, um, I was able to bring to the committee, and the committee was able to have discussion that parents were thinking. Because we don't get a large audience, but a lot of people do watch at home. 
Um, I also would like to thank um, all the members that I uh, worked with over the years. And I, like Susie said, she was valuable to me, um, both you, Mr. Peterson, and uh, Mrs. Clarkin and Mrs. Lamson. I can think of the, the top four people that um, really helped guide me as I came aboard the school committee. Um, you know, you, you were chair. Um, and helped me learn the ropes, as um, Mrs. Kane, you, you have done here, at letting your new members know that, you know, a nice meeting about budget, just to learn. I remember the first look at that budget. <laughs> You're like, I have no idea what all these lines are. Um, and over time, it will come. Um, and a special thanks to Mrs. Clark, and she definitely um, was a huge mentor to me. Um, a bright woman, generous. Uh, she is... Um, she knows everything about the building of the middle school, so as you get ready for the high school, we can always, we have her phone number. <laughs> and I still continue to bother Mrs. Clarkin from time to time um, for her insight and for her leadership and um, her generous uh, consideration and caring for all the students of Wilmington. And I've been fortunate um, with Mrs. Kane uh, to have had her uh, along with me for many years as well. Um, as a vice chair, we worked very well together. I think we uh, made nice progress with the previous superintendent and the present superintendent. Um, I also think that over my time here, um, I, I have grown a lot. I mean, it's been 12 years. <laughs> and um, I'm very happy to see the path that Wilmington has, has moved. And that's due to the commitment of all the administration and people like Mrs. Kane, Ms. O'Connell, Mr. Higgins, um, Mrs. Vale, everybody in the community putting in time um, and, and hard work. And um, a special thanks to the secretaries at the Roman House <laughs> who call me and remind me, you're supposed to be at a meeting five minutes ago, get over here. Um, so that's always been helpful to me. But I, I have enjoyed my time, um, and I've met many wonderful people and made some great friendships. Um, and I look forward to uh, Wilmington proceeding on that path, and I certainly will get out the vote, and I will encourage everyone to get out to vote uh, for the feasibility study and the opportunity to see a new um, high school in Wilmington, and I will love it, love to see that. So I'd like to thank you all, and thank you, Susie, for coming. Very nice. Um, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Well, that's very tough to follow somebody that's been on the committee as long as uh, Joan has, and I think mm -hmm. it takes a special person to, you know, involve themselves in any activity for 12 years. 12 years is a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly congratulations to you. As I sit here, you know, my last official meeting, uh, I wanted to personally thank the members of the committee. Um, I wanted to thank all the residents of Wilmington who elected me to this position three years ago. Uh, time certainly does go by so fast. It seems like it was only yesterday that we had the election, um, believe it or not. And um, I just personally want to thank Joanne and Peter and Paul and Neil and all of the central office administration all the faculty and staff, the students, um, the secretaries, you know, specifically, you all have been consummate professionals. You've been very friendly, very cordial, very professional. You've always been very expeditious in getting back to me as a committee member with any questions, any inquiries. And certainly through the three years, you know, we've had triumphs and tribulations as a committee, and I certainly think we've had more triumphs along the way. And I think that's something that um, I'm personally proud of to have been a part of a cohesive team that this committee brings forth and we have the support of everyone that's involved in the Bloomington Public School System and the town. Um, every day, you know, each one of you takes the lead, you know, in, in shaping the lives of probably the most precious commodity that we have in this town, which is our children. And you should be thanked for that. The teachers should be continuously thanked for that. The parents should be continuously thanked for that and the town as a whole. So thank you. I really, I really do appreciate it. I, um, I didn't know when I decided to run what I was really getting myself into, quite frankly. This was a great idea from my stepfather, Jim, that said, you know, you'd be great at this. And I'm glad that I did it. You know, I'm glad that I, you know, took the step. Uh, to do that. So I just wanted to say it's been a great, great experience. Um, I'm very proud of what this committee has accomplished before I joined, while I've joined, and I know that things are just going to continue to get better and better and continue to evolve um, in a very positive direction for years to come. 
I truly believe uh, that the Wilmington Public School System as a whole provides, you know, the best in class educational experience for the students that attend school here. And when I came here, I was saying to myself, you know, I really hope as I get close and I get on the inside that I'll see, you know, that this school system truly has, you know, a seamless K through 12 experience for every student, for every age level, for every skill set, um, that we have industry leading technology, that we have superior professional development, that we have new uh, innovative ways to strategically align with businesses and partner with the community to just make Wilmington the best place to live. And I can say with complete certainty as I sit here today that that takes place each and every day. And so I just want to say congratulations to all of you. Uh, for being part of the committee, for, for serving Wilmington as an employee or as a volunteer. And I wish all of you the very best in all of your endeavors as you move forward. Please come out on election day and vote for the new um, members for this election as well as all the other public offices that are up for election on April 24th. And if you can attend town meeting, it would be wonderful. We have uh, definitely have a major warrant item that's there that we need everybody's support. And I hope to see you all around town. And please, you know, stay in touch. And um, I'll always look to all of you as a friendly face. And please look to me as the same. And if there's ever any projects or anything that you need someone in the community to try and rally some support or to help generate some interest, you know, I don't have to be part of the committee to do that. So don't hesitate to call on me to try and, you know, get me involved. I'll still be around. So thank you. Thank you, Judith. Higgins. Board members, questions and comments. <laughs> I'll be, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <clears throat> I'd uh, first like to uh, thank uh, Joan for 12 years. Uh, that's, long time. that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. That's, that's, uh, that's impressive. And uh, I'm sure the town is very thankful for all the service you gave to it. Um, it's, not, it's not always easy. It's not always fun. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it, it it does take time. It takes it takes commitment. It takes uh, it it takes a lot of effort to um, to really put that time in and, and always do what's best for the for the for the town and the students. And I know that you always keep that um, at the front of everything that you've ever done here. So thank you for that, uh, Judy as well. Um, one and done, huh? One term and done. Could should have talked you into another one. Should have been talking to you sooner. Man, the one and done is killing me. But uh, thank you for your time here. I I appreciate it as well. Um, you know, three years is still a long time to, to give to the town, and, and it's it's tough. It's tough to make the meetings. It's tough to get here. It's uh, but what we get, um, what we get is worth it. You know, and we get the best school system in the state as far as I'm concerned and it's for our kids it's for our community and and um, you know I'm proud of being here and I know that you, you've been proud of being here too and and you should be because uh, you know even even serving one day on a on a committee is uh, is giving up personal time to 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 just make your community better so thank you for that as well uh, also please get out and vote next Saturday mm -hmm. um, that's it Thank and don't, you. don't forget uh, town meeting Saturday after. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Mr. Marchese. To Mrs. Duffy and Ms. O'Connell, I thank you for your service. It's been an interesting year. <laughs> Mrs. Duffy, you, you truly are the master of policy. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are the master and beyond. <laughs> so I, I, I give you that. And Ms. O'Connell, um, you've been uh, the voice of reason when we've had some roundtable discussions. You, you always bring things to the center. Um, not to take anything away from you, Mrs. Cain. No. Um, so, she certainly um, does. But I congratulate you both on, on your service and, and your passion. And I think we've seen some of that tonight with some of the discussions that we had. We're, we're all passionate about mm -hmm. the schools and, 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 and helping our children and do the best for Wilmington schools. And again, we saw that tonight in our, some of our discussions. It may have gotten a little bit heated, but that's because we're all dedicated and we want the best for the Wilmington schools, which which I'm very proud of. And, and I take nothing back tonight. And, and 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 I and I encourage all the debate that we had, which has been which has been phenomenal. Um, w with that, um, as we all know, tonight um, our legislators are you know, busy debating casino bill versus you know instead of taking up the bullying bill, which should go forward. Which I do 
you know, endorse this policy that we have here tonight. You know, um, as you all know, I'm very passionate about. Um, other things that we also learned about today, the Ways and Means Committee came out with, with their budget recommendations, cutting local aid by $234 million, of which most of the bite is going to come out of um, Chapter 70 funds. Fortunately, Wilmington is buffeted by that because we have a great town manager and we've, we've been budgeted for that. But other cities and towns right now, they're not, they're not ready for it and they didn't embrace for it. Um, they don't have the money and a lot of people are going to be hurting with this budget. Um, so it just, it, it's going to be a rough time for Massachusetts and, and beyond. So, um, uh, again, we are all dedicated workers here and none of us get paid. So, um, and you see it in the passion that comes out. Um, so with that done, um, I just want to say um, uh, good luck to the seniors on their fundraiser at Fuddruckers. Go out into Fuddruckers because the more money you spend there, the more money the seniors are going to get. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to all the students tomorrow night who are going to be inducted to the Honor Society. Um, I wish I could be there and, and see you um, get into that. Um, unfortunately, I have another commitment, but congratulations to all the students being inducted tomorrow night. And um, also, just I just want to say thank you again to the Wilmington High School um, boys basketball team. You're um, tremendous leaders, and I hope all the other sports teams in Wilmington follow your lead and throughout, throughout the other towns uh, and cities of Massachusetts. You set an, an excellent example, and I'm very proud of all of you. And, uh, and to the seniors, it's the final countdown. We're getting closer. So um, enjoy the rest of the year. So And please get out and vote next week, and do come to town meeting and let your voice be heard. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marchese. Dr. Quick, I can hear it. Oh, no. It's all been said. I know. OK, so let's see. Vote, <laughs> town meeting, and in a nutshell, we are truly going to miss the both of you, both of you the knowledge. Um, you know, and the hard work that you put into it. So, in a nutshell, thank you very much for your for your hard work, and we will miss you very much. Thank you, thank you, Quincy. Yeah, I mean, if Doctor Quick is, has to repeat everything, I mean, I, every every week, every <laughs> every meeting we get to be at I'm the end of the line, and it's all been said about four different times. Um, but uh, just uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Duffy and Mrs. O'Connell, for your for your service. It's been a pleasure working with you both. I know our paths will continue to cross in town and on other committees and in life. Um, and I look forward to those opportunities to to work with you and uh, and to relate with you again. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. And I would just like to add a couple of things. One is mm -hmm. that whenever there was anything in the school system, if they could attend it, Mrs. Duffy and Ms. O'Connell were there. And I really want to thank them for that. So it wasn't just these two meetings a week. They're being modest. They were they were at um, all kinds of school events, even working around this their um, work schedules. And for Mrs. Duffy, I'm, I envy you, Mrs. Duffy, because I know that you're at a point in your professional career where anything can happen, <laughs> and that things will work out wonderfully for you. I I really hope. And. Um, 12 years, it seems, and I'm sure it went by so quickly, but you've made such a difference. When you think of the number of policies that you worked on mm -hmm. and the changes that were happened in the school system, and you were right there with all of them, and you, so you have so much to be proud of, and I wish you the very best of luck as you go forward. And Ms. O'Connell, I just want to know, I am so going to miss your articulation. <laughs> I don't know where you come up with these phrases and these words. And as an English teacher, I'm sitting here going, why can't I talk like that? <laughs> so I am truly oh, going, to, going to miss you. You Just the way you say things is so intelligent and so clear. And you really are able to articulate what you want to say. And, and uh, we'll definitely miss that. And so thank you both. And Mrs. Thank Benton you. would like to. I get to go last. Yeah, I, um, I just have a small thank you to, to both of you. I'm going to start with Joan. Um, I thank you for hiring me because you were on the original committee and then recommended me to be a superintendent. Um, what I respect most about you is how ethical you are and how much you have supported the role of a school committee person in the six years that I have worked with you. And that's very difficult to do. And it, it's, it's easy to get caught up in, in other issues, but you have always held the line and reminded all of us of what the role of a school committee person is. 
The second piece is I love having you on school committee because you're an educator, and that has shined through throughout mm -hmm. all of the work that we've done together. It's made my work easier because you understand what differentiated instruction is and what standard-based <laughs> classroom education is and what technology is all about. And lastly, I guess I'd like to thank the Duffy family for give, sacrificing for 12 years uh, yeah. because they had to make sacrifices because as Peggy said, you were, you have, well, the six years I've been here, you were at every event that I attended and um, representing um, the school committee, and so they have sacrificed, so I wanted to thank them as well. So on behalf of um, all the students and staff, uh, thank you for an incredible run, and we hope that you will um, continue to, to visit the Roman House, so thank you. And Judy, the mathematician, who should be an English teacher, who gave up teaching. <laughs> I'm hoping to one day convince to come back into the world because it is your calling. I know it's in your heart. I have seen it over the past three years, witnessed by the decisions you have made. Um, you have truly uh, voted with your heart around educational issues. And I, I have always sat here and thought, she really needs to be back in the classroom. We need good math teachers. <laughs> and I think your love is there. Uh, the good news is, is uh, Ju Judy was appointed to serve on the scholarship committee by the selectmen on Monday night, so she will be participating in, in some activities. I admire your work on negotiations. I admired your, your work around um, that, is particularly in tough fiscal times. And it was not easy. And you um, stood up for what you believed in and what was best for, for the students in, in Wilmington. I hope that someday you will return to politics. And I mean that sincerely because you are the essence of, of, of what we need um, as our leaders, whether it be selectmen or school committee or some other um, position. I'll come Thank campaign you. for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I hate to move us on because it's only a couple more minutes, but thank you. Um, correspondence, no, Dr. No. Quick, nothing tonight. All right. Um, our future meeting dates and agenda items, April 28th um, will be our next meeting. The student activity account, the revolving accounts, reorganization of the school committee will put. And also, we just got information I had passed on to you today on the open meeting law. So we'll put that on the agenda also. Mm -hmm. And the superintendent will have suggestions for us as to posting meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and then May 1st, we have as our town meeting. Okay. Mrs. Duffy, would you like to make the motion to adjourn this meeting? I would like to do that. But Joanne, remind me, I really have to thank my husband. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I was so busy with the town and all, but um, behind me is my husband. And if there was something I couldn't find, he's much more better with technology than I am. So uh, for every hour that I put in, he put in just as many with me. Um, and my daughters, my two daughters, who were at kindergarten and not even in the school system before um, I joined the committee, um, are now both at the high school. Um, so I've seen the action of all, of all those buildings, and my daughters have given up some time and attended, dragged them along to some events with me. Um, so I appreciate the two of them, and they've gotten a good education here in Wilmington and will continue to, but uh, mostly to my husband, <laughs> Walter, who has um, really put in as much time as I have with all of the work that I do on this committee. So I have to thank him, and then I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, for, from which we shall not return. And would you like to second? <laughs> All those in favor? Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>